Hi there. I'm David Oleski here with the Rittenhouse Square Fine Art Show 5 O'Clock Club broadcast. And here we're uh, broadcasting uh, live from the mobile office in Miami, Florida. So all of you that are in parts of the country that are expecting uh, inches of snow and bitter cold and wind, I feel for you. But uh, right now it's just gorgeous here in Florida. So uh, today I'm going to be interviewing uh, Sue Chang and a uh, wonderful abstract artist. Uh, first, I want to uh, review the uh, deadline for the June show has just passed. However, the deadline is still open for the student applications for the uh, June show on June 7th, 8th, and 9th. The uh, deadline for the student application is March 18th, and the deadline is still open for the uh, September show, that deadline is March 11th. So uh, if you're a, a professional artist, uh, you definitely want to uh, have that in your calendar and be thinking about getting an application in. And if you did apply for the June show, hopefully we'll see you there. And, uh, and of course, for uh, students, you want to uh, get it together and get on board. Uh, so here I'm going to uh, bring in uh, Sue in a moment. Oh, everybody's here. Look at this. This is so exciting. Hi, Sue. Hi. How are you, David? Good. How are Good. you? Good. So, uh, welcome <laughs> to the show. Um, how's the weather in Chicago? Wonderful. Thanks for having me. <laughs> oh, you're very welcome. Thank you for uh, for joining us here. Uh, so, uh, how many years have you done the uh, Rittenhouse Square Fine Art Show? Actually, I've done it only once. Oh. Um, past September. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, always conflicted with other shows. And this was the first year that it didn't, I think, due to other schedules with other, you know, shows change their dates all the time. So um, I had the opportunity to do it and I really, really enjoyed it. Oh, so what did you think of the show? Amazing. Not what I had expected. Um, really? Yeah, not. Yeah. It just the setting in the park. Amazing. Um, you can't only get lost. But you can really also get lost because there are so many amazing work. Yeah. Um, so uh, <clears throat> do you think you'll come back? Absolutely. Yeah. For the September show. Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. Did you have any time to spend actually in uh, Philadelphia? Um, not really, but we made sure to enjoy every food at the opportunity oh. yeah so everything was in walking distance um great restaurants and uh, yeah even a little you know one of a kind uh, mom pop uh -huh. shops versus like your standard um places so it was kind of uniquely special yeah and i brought my daughter with me who just graduated from college so we both enjoyed it very much okay yeah, yeah we uh my uh, amporn and i always try to spend at least one night in the city uh, I'm local enough, we can commute from home, but uh, we always jump on an opportunity to spend at least one night just to stay out late and go out, you know, hitting the restaurants. Uh, I had another guest on here that goes to these restaurants with me, and we just we were going on and on listing all of our favorite places, and it's uh, it's seriously a foodie. It you know. really is. Yeah, yeah, and everything, yeah, possible. And, from and Italian of course, to, mm -hmm. the... Uh, uh, art museums. If hopefully next time you come, you can block out more time to see the Philadelphia Museum of Art and the uh, the Rodin Museum. Uh, you know, the Thinker is right out front on the sidewalk, and uh, and the Barnes Foundation. Um, this you know, it's a wonderful museum city okay. as well. Okay, definitely must do. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> uh, tell us about your work. Tell uh, did you went to art school? So. I did. Uh, well, I did go to school for art. I went in with fine arts. Um, once I got in, they said there's no money in fine art. So um, I ended up doing pretty much 99% um, of the freshman students. I went to Bradley University, um, ended up becoming graphic design majors. Mm. So, but I did take, um, I went in with fine art, so I did take a lot of painting classes, drawing classes, 2D classes, in addition to all the computer graphics and um, 3D classes. So, 
I don't know why they make you think that you can never sell your art in college. Um, so they do the safe route and make sure that you can get a job once you come out. Um, it's probably smart on some levels for most people. I mean, I was told only <laughs> one out of 100 of us would still be doing art in 20 years. And of course, everybody's sitting there saying, well, of course, it will be me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but in, in the end, yeah, it probably is one in a hundred of my classmates that still is doing art, you know, later in life. Yeah, but I, and you know, it's always a dream, obviously. Um, I had really good, lucky enough to have a really good grade school uh, art teacher, a middle school art teacher, and high school art teacher, um, and had the opportunity to, who, high school art teacher submitted my portfolio, made nationals, had, um, you know, got into many art schools, but, you know, first being a first immigrant, um, parents were not very, you know, kind about me going into art. So, um, but I said, I will stay in state and I got art scholarship to Bradley University and that's where I attended. Um, and then once I graduated from college, did some little bit of graphic design, but then once I had all my three children, youngest was like one, um, my husband said, do what you like to do. Mm. And so that's when I launched my uh, first art show and it's been 21 years now. Yeah. Wow. That's a, yeah, almost, almost as much as me. That's uh, that's interesting. So have you always lived in Chicago area? I have. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, but you know, Chicago has so much to offer. Oh, so, yeah. Um, yeah. and in the back in the days um art was really encouraged um in grade school middle school high school i mean we did everything um i look at my girls who are now in their 20s and barely offered any art when they were growing up i feel like compared to what i had so i was one of the lucky ones in the in the 70s and 80s yeah absolutely so right right um chicago what a great town mm -hmm. um, oh, absolutely yeah I, uh, yeah, every chance we can, uh, you know, between the shows there and just the museum and restaurants, and again, another epic foodie town. And uh, so Bradley University, is that also Chicago area? It's about two and a half hours south mm -hmm. of Chicago. It's a private school. Um, I want to say maybe five or 6,000 undergrad. Oh. Um, back in the days, they had a pretty good art program. Um, but I wasn't allowed to go out of state for art, um, even though I got into RISD and other art schools, but my parents were completely against it. So I had to convince that I would go to a four-year university and come out with um, some sort of a degree that I can pay my bills. Wow. So I, yeah, I was going to minor in accounting and didn't work out. <laughs> <laughs> Might be a good thing. So, uh, so you got into RISD. I did not get accepted to RISD. I, uh, I might have gone, but I'm kind of glad I didn't. Um, but you know, there's a you know, I know some exhibitors doing the shows that went to RISD, and they you know, completely different concept of what they're mm -hmm. doing. Which I think my concept was strongly influenced by my experience at the uh, Maryland Institute in Baltimore, a very traditional academic education, which kind of made me who I am. How much do you think uh, your undergrad studies on the side in art affect what you're doing as an artist now? Oh, I'm just so glad. Actually, I went to four-year university, got to take a lot of other class, academic classes versus just graphic design or, or fine art. Um, taking accounting classes, taking, you know, math and science and yeah, being able to like function like a normal person when I come out without, or with just, you know, I mean, I can't, I see these children now, like, I mean, I used to be in the city of Bulktown where um, it was called the Flatiron Building and a lot of local students um, who went to our Institute of Chicago or Columbia would come in and inquire questions and whatnot. And they're so lost because all, all they can do is actually draw and paint, but they have no life skills, no social skills. Um, or they're the not well. Sense. Yeah. So, I mean, as you well as you, I mean, you know, like we do our own taxes. We, I mean, there's a lot more to this business than just creating oh, yeah. art, you yeah. know? So I am actually lucky and thankful that I got to go to four-year university. Um, yeah, well, for sure. sure. I'd like to talk about your art. How much has it evolved in the past 21 years to what you're doing now? Oh gosh, well, I went to school. My art was realism, very, very tight, 
very oh, very tight wow. um wow. so you know when you can like look at something and draw that's what i did um i can pretty much look make it look like it was a photography um it took a long time to where i am and i love it i always said that everyone can be an artist everyone can copy draw what they see um but i feel like you know creating our own abstract on a blank canvas and it's out of complete thought and ideas and emotions and and whatnot is complete different animal um it it looks easy it's a lot more complicated so i'll, I'll be uh posting a a link to sue's uh um, instagram profile at the bottom of this uh, broadcast here but what was the transition from realism to what you're doing now because i i can't imagine what the evolution must have been <clears throat> i think um well i think it's i mean definitely i always appreciated abstract art i mean attempted in college i just didn't understand it i didn't understand the whole balance and all that and lighting that is the same as realism um and i think raising children um it wasn't easy um, I was a stay-at-home mom and worked in between. But um, I think, like, my first, one of my first painting was called Timely Manor. Um, how, and changing, like, just, it was, like, dark and red and yellow and how I can explain how I feel in my struggles in an abstract way versus painting something in a realism. You know what I mean? Right. Um, yeah, so that was my big, beginning like to to show my emotions on paper and on canvas without being me a painting of myself in like just sweating you know and, <laughs> <laughs> yeah so that was the beginning and it was challenging but once it was done I was like wow there's another layer to this there's another like um depth to this I did not know actually yeah so do you think you understand <laughs> abstract art now? I don't think I could completely understand it because I mine even in my abstract I have evolved so much. Right. Um, you know, colors and it's gotten lighter, brighter than in my early stages. There are some dark stages, and that's just because I think I was going through it with raising my children. Um, mm. You know, in the beginning of yeah, relationship, marriage, and whatnot, and I felt like I was pretty much pouring it onto my canvas. Right. Um, and now I feel like in my later fifties, now I feel like I've gone through so much, but there's a like a light at the tunnel. Mm. Um, all my I'm done um, with them. All my children are cut out of college. I'm done with tuition, <laughs> so I feel free. You know, so. Yeah, I feel like things are lighter. Yeah. All right. So there's, uh, do you see stages that are very identifiable as to where you were in your life with each body of work? Absolutely, 100%. Wow. 100%. Yeah, yeah. So you can literally like a walking and seeing my journey. Wow. Fascinating. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm endlessly intrigued by your work. I just, you know, I do not understand abstract work. Even though I do paint it, I know what I'm pursuing with what I'm doing. Uh -huh. And I also went through a big transition from representational to purely abstract. Um, I, I, I'm still just, I'm so fascinated by the idea of layering colors. How much of your work is designed from the beginning and how much of it evolves through the process i i think i'm i it's i don't sketch like other artists do um maybe a little bit barely though i barely sketch but i'm always working out in my head so i could be in the middle of dinner and i'd be sketching in the air like this and what colors it's going to be what lines i'm going to be creating and, you know, my husband and I have been married for almost 30 years now. And he still asks me, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm painting. And, you know what I mean? I'm like, so um, I would say it takes me a couple weeks, if not months, for certain pieces that I'm working on. Um, and, you know, sometimes I like to do create big pieces that just, you know, um, you create large scales and you understand it. So sometimes I feel like it needs a little more 
time and devotion and energy into it. Um, like sometimes, I, I mean, right now, even like I, I'm in working on five pieces at the same time, but I feel like I, it doesn't, I don't devote as much time as much as I'm saying, I'm going to do one ginormous, my centerpiece. And I'd be painting in my head for a good month in my head. And then I dive into it. And obviously, it's not going to come out exactly what I like. Mm -hmm. um, and things change um, every stroke, every line, or every color. I thought, oh, I think I like that green, but maybe I'm not into that green. You know, I imagine it to be certain color. Okay. Um, but I would say it wouldn't change as much, though. It's nothing drastic. Right. I already have it pictured in my head what I'm going to create. That's amazing. So how much how much evolution do the color choices and how how important are they to the original vision? Um, you know, it's not... It, it is important, but it's not. If I feel like that did, I'm like, you know what, that green, I want that to be blue in different shade, and I'm okay with it. Um, it but it, when, you know, once everything is on paper and you look at it and you take a photo of it and you're, you're studying it, you're, I mean, you're, I don't know if you do it or not, but I study my own pieces as I, in going through um, stages and, and thinking, like, I'll look at it in my iPhone and I'd be like, no, it needs a line mm -hmm. over here. This needs to be a thicker stroke, needs to bring out that orange underneath. So um, maybe subtle, but nothing like drastic happens to it though, really, I don't think. Right. There's a question here from uh, Sharon Stryan, our uh, chairperson. Uh, the uh, question that artists are often asked, how do you know when a piece is completed? I mean, that's everyone's question, right? Um, yeah. Yeah, um, sometimes the show's tomorrow and you got to stop. <laughs> <laughs> but most of the time you just kind of, you, you ha I have deadlines when things are to be done. So I make sure that, if, you know, like I'll finish something. I think I'm done. The next morning I walk down to the, the studio and I'm like, no, this needs to be a thinner line or that line is to just go and that is my last walkthrough kind of like you know when you inspect your house when you're selling or buying a house you know you do the final walkthrough I do the final walkthrough before I decide um, it could be the it, nothing ever big happens a minor changes happen but I do a final walkthrough and say okay this is done yeah. Sharon says good answer show deadline <laughs> oh, yeah <laughs> So what material are you using that you're able to keep coming back and working it and adding to it? I mean, mine is, I use acrylic painting, but I only use paintbrush and palette knife. Um, as long as I think it's, I mean, you know, you know exactly when, how long it needs to be dried before you can put on the next layer and you pull another color out. Um, but the, the, I know people have a hard time with acrylic painting because it dries oh, yeah. so fast. Oh, yeah. But I love the fact that it dries so fast. I don't know if I would have the patience for oil painting. Um, the only reason I used to do oil oils before, and the only reason I switched to acrylic um, early stages about 18 years ago is because um, I had children and I didn't want to work with all the chemicals and, right. you know. So I had to learn how to do use acrylic. And now it was hard. It was difficult. I'm like, how do people paint this when this could dry within 30 minutes? Right. But now I love it. I feel like I've I've mastered it kind of like I know what I can, you know, change and what I don't have to change. Yeah. So what I'm wondering about acrylic is how do you mix colors or do you just have a <laughs> hundred tubes of different colors? Um no, I mean I have I have my basic colors that I like, but I mix them and sometimes I mix I just, I don't, I'm very generous with my paint. I am not stingy with well, paint. You, I'm like, you, you know, you just, yeah, and I, yeah, and if I had decided that I, you know, squeezed out like a, a half a tube and to mix it with another colors and it just quite isn't the color, then it just isn't the color. But I am generous with it just because if I'm working with a larger scale of a painting and that perfect formula, you can't recreate it sometimes when you're covering a big, you know, right. surface. 
so I want to make sure that I have enough when in color in, in mixture. So, yeah. Oh. Um, so there's a lot of paint being discarded with each yes. of these color decisions. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. So, I mean, you know, um, clients are paying a lot of money for it. So I right. don't want to be stingy with it. So right. um, I feel like they deserve it. Right. right. I mean, I'm that way with oil paint, as expensive as it is, but I can keep using it and reusing it for days. Mm -hmm. you no, know, I can have it's like a soup stock. You can have some of your base grays set aside and keep using them to build up your volume to cover bigger areas. Right, right, right. I don't have that, um, yeah, the privilege to do that with acrylic. I mean, it would be dry if I walked away 30 minutes later. Oh, I know. You know. Yeah, I played so. with acrylics for a little while, and it, it <laughs> felt more like dry drawing with a dry mm -hmm. brush than actually making color decisions. Right, right, right. So um, once I make the decision that I'm going to start painting, I'm in it for a good run. Um, I can't say I'm going to walk away and come back, walk away and come back, because I know exactly what. But if I'm pulling certain layers, I know that it's going to maybe take 20 minutes to dry to pull some layers out. But <clears throat> other than that, yeah, so I'm committed. Yeah. Right. When I'm painting. That's interesting. Yeah. I, I uh, yeah, that's helpful for me. I I would like to understand <laughs> more about how to work with other materials, especially with other drying times, and uh, and and specifically for the same reason for my health. At some point, I may hit the wall and realize I can't be around solvents anymore, and you know all the carcinogenic pigments and whatever, and and may have to figure out how to work with uh, acrylic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was my big thing why I started acrylic because of my, I was painting in the house with children, so right. I decided I needed to switch over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So uh, what uh, what other abstract painters do you like? Um, I mean, I love Rothko. People always say, oh, your work, do you, do you like Rothko? Do you know Rothko? I'm like, yes, I love Rothko. <laughs> um, yeah, and then um, Tullus is tracked. I mean, he's not an abstract artist, but love his work um the the vibrancy of the colors mm -hmm. um the cabaret all that is so it's like i always say uh, rothko meet toulouse is my painting the simplicity with like harsh colors sometimes mm -hmm. it's in your face but i feel like um you will know if it's my painting you know so yeah but, so um, your work really does stand out does uh does anybody here uh, in the listening audience have any uh questions for sue or for b even about anything is there anything you want to add me i don't know no so uh so we might see you again in uh september yes mm -hmm. uh do you uh what's what's next for you what's uh do you do you see another body of work do you like do you have ideas of where you'd like to go next with your work um so i mean it's um changes definitely changes shapes are really fun for me lately um so and like you know i do a lot of um dry brushing um onto canvas and people think I always use some sort of other medium other than paint or paintbrush or palette knife but it's all through um, paintbrush and some are like really thin paintbrushes that I literally um, cut out part of the um, the brush to make it really dense and firm like almost like a, a chalk right. shape of it so um, people are always curious that if I have other mediums like oil pastels yeah. or um, I'm always wondering that. It looks like pencil yeah, almost or um, oil pastels. Crayons and whatnot, but no, they're all through different, um, or the pal I mean, um, paintbrushes. Oh, really? That, that is mm -hmm. fascinating. I, yeah, I would have assumed it was totally mixed media of everything. But uh, here's a question. Do you glaze on an acrylic painting? I do. I do. Um, well, I varnish um, at the end of it. Um, I let it dry. Um, there's always like a minimum two to three days of full drying time. And then that's when I do uh, varnish outside of the house in the garage. Um, it's kind of a little bit difficult sometimes in the winter time, but it has to be heated. And um, But that's when the sauvignon it comes in and it's all varnished and it takes about a good 48 hours so to this, dry before. It, is this like a Damar varnish? Um, it's... Um, 
it's by Liquitex. Wow. And I can't remember what it is. Um, I've tried so many different kinds. Um, and in the end, this was the solution. And it, it, people are always um, shocked that it's acrylic, that it's not oils because it has a little bit of sheen to it. I feel like it does, the, it really finishes my um, paint. Um, the, the whole canvas looks so much, the art looks so much better. better. It's vibrant. It's more, it gives more life to it versus if I left it. Mm -hmm, yeah. So it is an extra step, but I love the, the outcome of it. So yeah. that's, that's what I'd like to learn more about final <laughs> varnish. Some of my darker colors flash out and go matte finish. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, rather than just be touching those spots to come up with a consistent sheen final coat that would tie it together and restore the sheen of certain areas that flash out and go matte finish. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I did try matte. It just doesn't do justice for what I create. I feel like even the fine lines just pop better with the varnish. Um, so yeah, um, every piece has to be varnished. Um, so uh, uh, Sharon, uh, came in again, would it, it would be great to see a demonstration of your painting process. Do you ever do uh, live demonstrations of you working? No, um, I've only done actually just teach. I don't know, um, only teaching a little bit, only when it came to, I've done a few times where um, when my children were younger and I had um, my, one of the art teacher was really, um, above and beyond your normal. So her and I, I remember doing a submitting a, a, for fun, like extra like um, request from the, uh, what do you call it, the school district. They granted us extra $2,000 just for me. I invited five other artists who had diff who um, did different mediums. And so we got to teach children, third, fourth, and fifth graders. Um, so we had extra fun, like, you know, like everyone got like $500 to bring, buy whatever material for the children and then um, give that kind of lessons. I've done that. Or when there's um, a fundraising, then I would do a little bit of it, but not would really. Do you, you ever be interested? Because we, uh, the other two Thursdays of the month, we like to have uh, live demonstrations from artist studios for the five o'clock club. And it would be fascinating to watch your process. Not that you might be working live at four o'clock Chicago time, but uh, <laughs> uh, I, I think it would be fascinating just to see, you know, 35, 45 minutes of you just working and maybe talking a little bit about the different processes, even though I know it would just be one narrow snapshot of the broad development of a painting, but uh, yeah, maybe it would be a fun Maybe in the future. Okay. Well, Sharon, make a <laughs> note. We'll uh, we'll get back to you on that soon. I think uh, you know. I personally would love to see that, and and that is something we do. And I think that would be a, uh, you know, it, it's fun. I when I set up a canvas and my paint and get ready to work, I find I'm more engaged with just talking, and I I have a hard time disconnecting the fact that I'm doing a broadcast and just actually try to uh -huh. paint. But maybe, maybe a different kind of dynamic or a different kind of setting, maybe you could or would, you know. So. Yeah, it, it's hard because for, I want to say good over 12 years, um, no one was allowed to be in the house when I was painting even. Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> when, they were, my, when my kids were young, my husband, his job was to take the children out huh. so I can paint. So I have a zero disturbance. Yeah, it was, yeah, I needed a complete silence, complete no distraction. Um, and yeah, good 12, 13 years, I think he did that. That's but so and then harsh. another five year was like, he had, he can be in the house, but nowhere near the studio. Mm. Um, yeah, so it just in ca last couple of years, he's allowed to be walking past the studio. He just can't <laughs> say anything. No, he okay. can't. <laughs> I had to build an entire addition onto my house to have a, a place where I could work. And uh, yeah, there, there, there's there's certain ground rules as far as the kind of conversations that we can have if, if my boy wants to, my wife wants to visit in the uh, addition. And uh, yeah, you need a very selective kind of a climate to to really dig into it. And oh, I, it, it's we're we're so complicated. I mean, I I think we don't mean to. I think. 
yeah, we're just complicated, yeah. you know? I, yeah, yeah, and you, you try to apologize and say, sorry, this is how I work, this is what I yeah. need, and if I get this done, it has to be like this. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's not like chopping the onions and you just get it done. This is getting, you know, this, you know, it's supposed to be the joy of painting, but, you know, it doesn't always feel that way, and you no. can't really share that space where it's not the joy of painting. Right, right, exactly. And then, when you know, when you study other masters, um, and you understand it, do you know what I mean? You just understand how, why, and how, all the reasons behind it, and you, because you can, feel, you feel it, and you're living it, and you, you know, and you share that moment, like, you're like, I get it, you know, um, when you're young, and you're reading about it, you're like, wow, there's crazy yeah. artists, Not I mean, <laughs> yeah, exactly, you know, but somehow, we're like, oh my gosh, we're living them, you know, but yeah. Um, we're actually making money doing it, though, you know, so yeah, there is that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I mean, yeah, you read about, you know, just see, I mean, seriously, uh, you know, Lucian Freud insisting the model be there while he's painting the dog that's on the floor. You know, or like the angst of Rothko and just all of them. It's all about this angst and passion and and fiery, you know, studio sessions and uh, yeah, it's a very real thing, and I, and I guess the more serious we are about getting each piece done, the closer we get to the, those fiery yeah. things. Uh, I know. So I got to, I had the opportunity to see um, the Broadway Red. It's based on um, on Rothko. Oh, Do you ever I heard, heard of it? Um, heard of it. Yeah. Yeah. So I got to see it, and literally I cried because oh. I feel like I relate. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you know, right. Now is the the biggest uh, collection of Rothko works in Paris that only the richest person in the world that owns Louis Vuitton, uh, Pierre Arnaud, uh, he funded gathering works from collections all over the world. There's 150 Rothkos on four floors of the Louis Vuitton building in Paris, oh, and it's wow. only it's only this winter. It ends, I guess, early spring. It's kind of a once in a lifetime chance to see, you know, what might be the only collection like this of Rothko's work. Wow. So if you can work oh. in a trip to Paris between coming to Florida, <laughs> I highly recommend it. I, mean, yeah, I don't think I can. No, no. Wow. I would love to, though. I would love to. Yeah, yeah I, I would too. And, and yeah, and, and as we're thinking of travel plans, that is one of the options. But, you know, Paris in the middle of winter. Yeah, you know, weighing it out. I was like, I'll oh, just keep working. And, yeah. You know. Yeah. Paris is beautiful, oh, though. Yeah. No <laughs> well, thank you, Sue. This was a lot of fun. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It was a lot oh, of fun. You're very welcome. And uh, so, everybody, thank you to Sue Chang. And uh, again, the, uh, the deadline for students for the June show is March 18th. The deadline for the September show for professionals is March 11th, and uh, I look forward to seeing everybody in the uh, in the park here in June on June 7th, 8th, and 9th. And uh, hopefully, you'll be able to stop and see Sue's work at the September show. Uh, or if you're in Chicago, look her up. I'll have a link to her Instagram, and you'll be able to find her show schedule and track down and, and see her work or visit her website by all means. And uh, thank you again. Thank uh, you. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.